Okay. Hi guys. I'm back with another video and I have two guests with me. This is Raven. Hey. And this is Alex. Hello. Um, and today we're just going to talk about um, demo school. Uh, what we did to get here. Um, how we're enjoying it so far. And stuff like that. So hopefully it's helpful to you guys. And yeah. So let's get started. So Raven, where are you from? I am from Memphis, Tennessee. Alex? I'm from Memphis as well. <laughs> okay, so uh, where did you go for undergrad? I went to the University of Memphis in Memphis, Tennessee. And I went to the Tougaloo College in Jackson, Mississippi. And that's how me and Alex met. Well, we actually met at Tougaloo. And so now we have the opportunity to be here at Meharry together. And so we all met um, doing the Masters in Health Science program and we were all fortunate enough to get into dental school by doing that program. And so, um, Raven, can you tell me how it was how it was coming like from the University of Memphis? Yes, definitely. So I went to a PWI. The University of Memphis is very diverse. So it was a lot of things that I had to adjust to coming to an HBCU. Um, definitely technology. I feel like um, in my undergrad years, a lot of the technology was very up to date and modern. And here, um, it's a little bit of a slower process, definitely. So that was a huge adjustment and um, definitely a smaller school. So I had to get used to that as well, um, being in a class with only 40 people as opposed to maybe two or 300. Um, so that was a big adjustment for me as well. And Alex, coming from an HBCU to another HBCU, like how did that help your transition? Well, I felt like I was still in the same place. Like I had the exact opposite view of Raven because our biggest class was probably 30 something people. And my smallest class was 13 and you know, maybe electives. Wow. Our electives would be 50 or so many people. So it really was just the same, like I feel like my teachers pushed me hard enough and since my teachers knew my name, they were always on me. So if I slacked in class, it was like, Alex, when you gonna get it back together? Like, um, are you coming to class today? Why are you not in class today? Are you going to the lab today, Alex? <laughs> so I feel like this was to me was actually more relaxed. So the first semester was actually really good, aside from my guard micro and I guess that's because out of all our classes it was the only one that was clinically based like you can't change biochemistry you can't change cell and neuro that was a blessing from God yes, Jesus. but yes I enjoyed it and it's I just like the environment of feeling loved by people that look like me that want to see me succeed and that was for me coming from a majority white high school to a HBCU and it made me want to continue to be an HBCU. And to add on what Alex just said, she made me think about some things. Coming from a PWI to a HBCU that's smaller, I had to learn how to get out of the competitive mindset because at the PWI, I definitely had to compete with my 200 classmates. So it was all about me and transitioning to a HBCU, I had to really understand that people do love me and they want everyone to win and I was not used to that so I had to break away from that competitive mindset to a family mindset and that's definitely what you get here in Meharry. So um, we we made it through the master's program and so now we're um, in our D1 year of dental school and it's been this is like we're starting the third week so how have y'all enjoyed it so far? And like what what have you what have you noticed differently? <laughs> um, the difference now, I guess, how Raven was talking about the competitive mindset, I think a lot of people haven't gotten to the point that this isn't a competition. And you could feel it in the energy when you talk to certain people. I do feel prepared as Dr. Jackson would say, it ain't oh I got that, but I do feel like, oh, I kinda understand this. So now, I feel like I got a little leverage room to Definitely. be comfortable just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, and then especially looking at familiar teachers with familiar faces and the same PowerPoints. It's, I've seen this before. Right. So Alex, there's no reason you can't get this this time if you didn't get it the first time. Definitely. But once, 
Uh, not, uh, never again. <laughs> oh, I definitely feel the same way as Alex. It's only the third week, so there's only so much we can say to you guys. Get back with us probably in the fall semester, and I probably have a white different story for you. Coat. White coat. White coat, August 11, 2017. <laughs> but it's been a breeze so far. <laughs> not a breeze. <laughs> but it'll definitely pick up um, in August. The master's program definitely has prepared us thus far. Yeah. And just to add, since Kelly said the whole point of the video is to help you, I've came to this new slogan in life, and that is just to trust the process. Like, I'm pretty sure both of these young ladies to my right, they can agree that we might have thought we was ready for dental school, but when we got into that master's program, it was like, okay, God, I see what you did there. Yes. I definitely. wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. I was not prepared. So, that really did put me in a mindset of being a professional. Not saying that if I would have gotten into dental school, it wouldn't have been great. But it's probably going to be a lot better since I did do the Definitely. master's program. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, to break down what Alex was just saying to y'all, to me, um, I was the type of person that felt like if I saw my peers kind of fast in the process, I felt like I needed to match that. And when I didn't, I felt like I was either incompetent or I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. So being pushed back and having to do a master's program before I actually got into dental school, I was really down about that. But as she said, going through the process, it made me realize, wow, I was not equipped with the tools that I thought I was for dental school. And after we've gotten out of the program and going through our third week of dental school, it's definitely helped. So yes. it's not about timing. It's not. Like, it's not. Just find your own pace. Yes. Don't work harder. Work smarter. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. And so um, I know like maybe it's some people that are preparing to go to dental school. Uh, so like what did you do to prepare for the DAT maybe? And if you have any words of advice to give them? Do you want the first and the second time or just the second time? <laughs> Trust the process. Trust the process. <laughs> so like tell them what you went wrong the first time and then what you did right the second time you took it. Honestly, I felt like I lacked the knowledge of knowing that how rigorous it would be to study. Like at first, I didn't know studying literally had to be my job. So I was doing an internship. I was working 12 hours a week at PetSmart. And I was still, you know, relaxing on the weekend. You know, I would maybe study two to three hours a day. And that was the first time. And I felt like I waited too long because classes like general chemistry and organic, and even though Trig wasn't on there much, those are classes that I took freshman year. Right. And I took the DAT the summer after my junior what are you gonna ask me yeah that's what i was gonna ask you when did you take it yeah and i took it the summer after my junior year so that was before my senior year so even throughout the whole senior year i'm trying to graduate and at the same time i'm going ballistic with my head cut off because especially that last semester i took 18 hours of last semester because and then i was rushing to take biochemistry just in case i was gonna need that mm -hmm. to get into the dental school <coughs> it's like i wasn't informed on a lot so mm -hmm. the second time around, I made sure I wasn't working. I took the Kaplan course, and this is a side from me giving advice. It is a money maker. The same people who give the MCAT and the DAT, I promise you they're making money off Kaplan because they have designed most of these tests now. I don't care if you're the 4.0 student or the 2.5 student. Everybody almost needs these prep courses just because... It's not about the amount of knowledge that you have. You can go learn everything, but it's how you approach the question is what they're looking for. How fast can you deduce how to get to the correct answer, even if you don't know the information? Mm -hmm. So the second time, I definitely feel like I took that breather and I took that time. Classes was on Tuesday and Thursday from 3 to 5. I had homework. I had reading. And for me, that helped because it forced me because that class was $1,500. So it was mm -hmm. like... Are you going to waste your own money? One, the first time you wasted your own time. This time, this your money and your time. And it worked out. So, Raven, you can ask. Um, my process was definitely similar to Alex. However, um, I ended up taking DAT my close to the beginning of my senior year in college. 
um, and completely bombed it. I had a full load of courses and I was serving my first term as vice president of SGA at the University of Memphis, so my workload was extremely heavy. However, I did purchase Kaplan my first time when I flunked the DAT, but I did <laughs> pretty much <laughs> bomb it. Flunk it, y'all. It was just um, not the school. I'm gonna be about. honest with you guys. Um, I did the self study on Kaplan, and like Alex told you, it was fifteen hundred dollars. So my dad was pissed. <laughs> Um, so I took it. I thought I was prepared, but um, when my score came up on the screen, it quickly showed me that I was not as prepared as I thought. First time I took it, I made a 16. Um, but before I came to the master's program, I um, did a summer program at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center, and they held me accountable for learning the material on top of having a Kaplan in class um, tutoring outside of um, self-study sorry guys I got lost in my thought and that helped substantially I ended up with an 18 before I came to the program so I had my score um, ahead of time because at Meharry the master's program is basically set up as a bridge program and you sign a contract and they give you um, a list of criteria that you have to fulfill before the end of the school year um, to matriculate on to dental school so yeah so yeah, I took the DAT three times, um, and they say you can only take it three times. <laughs> Trust the process. Trust the process. <laughs> so the first time I took it was the summer of uh, junior year, and I was doing research, and so I like pulled out some study material the night before the test. And I was like, PAT, what's that? And so I was, <laughs> I, was like, I was trying to learn how to do PAT the day before the test. And I was like, I already had these classes, so I don't need to study that. I'm supposed to know that. I'm a biology major. And so I went in, took it. First time I took the test, I made a 15. Um, that was truly like me not prepared. Um, the second time I took the test was... I want to say December of that same year. I took the test in June and I was like, man, that test was easy. I can just study this time and <laughs> um, take it again in December and be good. So I studied um, and I used the term very loosely and I went into the DAT in December and I made a 16. And I was like, well, at least I went up a point. Um, and so coming to Meharry, um, and doing the master's program, um, if you didn't have the score that they required, um, you had five weeks um, between Christmas, during the Christmas holiday, so between Christmas and New Year, um, they give you five weeks um, in your tuition. You pay for the Kaplan class, and um, yeah, and you have a teacher that comes like twice a week. And so after taking the Kaplan course, um in studying like i studied like it was class so like i actually studied for real this time uh i had i made an 18 and so um it's it's true what they say like you you get out what you put in so yes. um i did i did well that time so yeah I forgot. Where's the 18 crew? <laughs> yes, I didn't. I didn't. I feel like this was scores. like a commercial for Sorry, I just. Didn't <laughs> I mean, I'm, yes. but. so if you don't have your score the first time, don't freak out. Stay motivated. Realize that this is your dream. Trust the process. Take some time off and study. Try to eliminate extracurricular activities. Hanging out with your friends, maybe having a job. Take about a good six to seven weeks to solely study for the test, yes. and you will see results. Learn when to say no yeah. like some people still don't know how to say no yeah and so this was just like a little um, video to maybe like give some motivation or encouragement to somebody who needs it um, and like we said this is like only the first three weeks of school um, I'll be sure to bring them back again yes oh, so. and the only thing I want to add before you conclude the video also, if there is anyone that is freshmen or sophomores, there are dental internships, but you have to find them. I was very upset because it was my senior year when I found out about certain dental internships that are paid, stipend, 5000 wow. a summer. They paying you. 
you getting hands on and it looks great on your resume. Keep your GPAs up. Yeah, um, a lot of people talk about how uh, medical school is competitive. Dental school is just as competitive, if not more it's competitive. Because what do we have, 63? It's only 60, what, 60. 60. It's 60 something dental schools in the United States, and it's way more medical schools in the United States. And of those 60, most are in state only. Yes, and the thing to keep in mind is that outside of your motivation and your drive and your love for dentistry these dental committees cannot measure your love so unfortunately they decide based on numbers so make sure your gpa is high and your dat is 18 and above um, to ensure that you will be a competitive candidate for a dat i mean to get into dental school yes. so thank y'all for watching um if you would like to subscribe to my channel go ahead and click subscribe um, and like and comment on the video and I'll have uh, more people who look like us <laughs> and next time you'll see this beautiful black woman in a nice clean white, white coat white coat yeah black, back in August <laughs> black people in white coats <laughs>